Hello, I'm Rachel from Dwensa Garden in Ireland and you are very welcome to this orchid update video. So in this video, I'm going to show you various ones of my orchids that are in flower at the moment, some that are in bud, and I'm just going to talk a little about what's been happening with my orchids recently. So let's get on with the video. First off, welcome back to you long-term Orchid subscribers. And I know there are some people who have followed me for a long time and are chiefly interested in my Orchid collection. And I thank you very much for your support. I am sorry it's taken so long to make another Orchid update, but a couple of things have been happening and I will go through them in a bit of detail soon. But before we do that, let me just show you a couple of the highlights, a couple of the things that are looking really, really fantastic right now. And with the good news, and the first thing I want to tell you about is this fantastic Angricum. Now, this Angricum is a cultivar called Crestwood something or other. It's a fantastic plant with big white waxy flowers and this year I have two spikes one spike with one flower and over there another spike with another flower and each of those spikes has a second subsidiary flower that unfortunately has blasted and we'll go into the reasons for that very shortly but I absolutely love this plant now angricums of course are in the Vanda alliance but perhaps more easy to deal with to grow in a home environment than the other vandas which need a lot more tending a lot more watering that's been my experience anyway having said that i can't claim that i have managed to get this one to flower very frequently it has two or three times flowered in the time that i've had it and i have had this one for oh seven years so it's a big plant which you have to consider if you're going to grow it indoors and that you mightn't manage to get optimal conditions so that it will flourish and flower for you every year is something else that you need to consider if you're going to have one of these in your collection but when it does flower it's amazing with these fantastic waxy flowers and this long long spur and look at that. And of course, this is the Darwin orchid, the one that Darwin, when he discovered it, conjectured that there must be some insect with a tongue long enough to pollinate it. And to pollinate it, the animal's or the insect's tongue has to be as long as the spur here at the back. And of course, he was laughed at at the time. And it wasn't until after his death that the moth that pollinates the Darwin orchid was eventually discovered and he was proved right. Personally, I think I'd have just shut up in such a situation. <laughs> I obviously don't have the courage of my convictions or the bravery that Darwin had, but it's a beautiful plant and this Crestwood cultivar is supposed to be more floriferous than just the species. So there you go if you're considering an angricum in your collection. Uh, what else do we have? Okay, just another couple before I give you a bit of background as to what's been happening. And I'm going to try and pull this one out. Now, as you can see, I've set my orchids up so that we have a couple of fowls kind of intertwined here. And this is just a hybrid fowl that you might pick up from a DIY store or, um, you know, a supermarket here in Ireland. Very easy to grow and very inexpensive as well. And this one I've had for a long, long time. Now it actually hangs up in another room. These are just in here for display purposes and the flowers droop down and I love that. And it flowers reliably and it's white. Like the majority of them are. Everybody starts out with a white fowl but it is, it is nice. I mean, do you know, we can all have the more interesting exotic orchids, but it's nice to have a backdrop of more mundane moth orchids, for example, that flower reliably and just flower for a long period of time. Because as we all know, well, Cattleyas and the likes and Grycums, for example, you're not gonna have a flowery black backdrop with those for most of the time. 
Okay, so the next one I wanted to talk to you about, let's just put it over here where we can see it a bit better, is this Brasada Orange Delight. And this featured in a recent flowering video of mine because it came into flower for the first time. Now, most of these orchids we're looking at today are orchids I've had for a long time. So, you know, you're talking from five years onwards. This one I think is actually six years old and I got it as a seedling and it didn't flower for the longest time, but it flowered there recently and it flowered, oh yeah, it, I mean, oh gosh, it was over two weeks anyway that it was in flower. So I'm hoping it's going to have the same longevity of flowering this time round as it did last time, because last time it was fantastic. And the, the color is really, really good, isn't it? So um, well worth having. You can see the flower spike from last time round there. And just a, a little quirky thing about this plant is the fact that it seems to be slightly variegated not overall, but some of the leaves have these kind of uh, creamish stripes in them. And it seems to be quite stable because they have been in there for the longest time. They haven't disappeared. So this one will get potted up or potted on this year. And I hope it'll go on to do great things for me because I really like it. And well, you know, I'm all about reliable flowers these days. I want orchids that flower reliably that I can count on to come back. And yeah. So just a little kind of word or two about what's been happening with my collection. And let me see. In you go there. See, doesn't it look nice with the fowl on top? Well, we had a bit of boiler trouble this year and the boiler which fires the heating in the house packed in. It was 20 years old and we needed to replace it. But we had to wait for um, more than two weeks to, for the replacement to come and to be fitted. So for that time period, we were working with one electric heater. It was very cold because, you know, it was January and I grow a lot of tropical orchids in the house like um, Cattleyas, etc. So Cattleyas, as we all know, yeah, they want a 10 degree minimum and there was a 10 degree minimum, but to flourish, they really need more heat than that. And they didn't have the more heat. So the result was a lot of blasted spikes and flowers, which is really quite disappointing because we all love when we see those spikes coming up and you know, we go in and we photograph them every day and we just watch them like a hawk. So then to have those cherished spikes just blast is kind of a blow. But the good news, I guess, is that presumably my orchids aren't long-term damaged. They should bounce back and hopefully next year I will have more spikes to show you. So just, yeah, uh, it, was, it was a bit of a, a blow, but it is what it is. Okay, so what else am I going to show you? And I guess, oh yeah. Now, this is just finished and this is a tiny Cattleya orchid, the only Cattleya in bloom I have to show you today. And as you can see, it's not really in bloom. <laughs> so this one is called Final Blue and I, We'll show you a picture now of it in flower with mini queenie eye, which is another one that I grow. And the flowers really are quite similar. So this one, the final blue, has a more open lip and the other one has a deeper color, but the colors are very similar. It's called final blue, but as we know <laughs> with Cattleyas, there isn't really a true blue. So it's really kind of a more mauve or a pinky purple or whatever you like to call it. But I do have that one photograph to show you, thankfully, <laughs> because this one has finished. Yeah, I should have made the video yesterday. It was still in bloom yesterday. Okay, so. I have Oncidiums in bloom and this gorgeous, gorgeous one here at the back a really, really reliable flower is sending up another spike at the moment. And this one is so prettily scented. The scent is really, really gorgeous. 
and such a reliable, reliable, vigorous plant, which needs a potting on because it's right up at the edge of the pot. But that's something I'll do now in spring. When it finishes flowering, when it pushes out a new growth, it'll be time to get on with repotting a number of my orchids. Just right behind my head here, we have a dendrobium and this is just finishing now. So it has a spike here with four flowers arranged in a circle uh, around the spike. It has a new growth up above, which I hope is going to produce a, um, well, a terminal flower spike, which it did before. And it was very, very welcome. I really love this one. It is currently my favorite dendrobium. Now I must say I am not in any way an expert when it comes to dendrobiums. And over the years I've grown various ones that have done well or not so well, depending on variety. And now I'm really down to a hard core of ones that I know that do well for me. And this is one of them. I've had it four years, I believe. And it's a big enough plant, but really gorgeous, large flowers, which I really like. And it reliably flowers. So what more do you want really? At the very front here, I have a number of plants in bud, which I just thought I would show you briefly before I give you an update on a couple of other plants that you saw recently. Now this one here has a bud, just one bud. Isn't it so disappointing when Cattleyas just offer you one bud? I mean, you know, if you're going to go to the trouble of sending up a spike and a sheath, it's just broken out of the sheath there, as you can see, couldn't you, while you were at it, have stuck another flower in there? <laughs> but this one is um, going to have glorious orange flowers first flowering for me i think it's about two years i've had this and i just can't wait to see this flower come out it's a, quite a, a vigorous plant doing well in this holy clay pot and i hope that it will go on to do great things longer term in terms of paths you will have seen this white one just trying not to upset everything in flower before. It flowered very recently with two spikes. So there's one spike and there's another spike and it's sending up a, another, another spike there. So I can't wait for this to come into to flower. It's a hybrid, beautiful white flowers that are really wide and quite flat and very, very nice. And when I got this plant, I bought it at the Schwerter Nursery in Germany when I actually visited there and picked it up. And it was several seedlings in the one pot because I divided it when I repotted it. And this here, this pot here, is actually a community pot. There's at least two plants in there. I can't remember how many exactly. Uh, there were smaller pieces as well I gave to friends. And now the smaller one here is going to flower. So you can see that bud there for the, for the first time. So it'll be nice to have two of these in bloom at the same time. It would be very nice, very nice indeed. Um, then we have oh, this Oncidium Alliance one, which you've seen flower and repeat flower. A nice scent off this one. And it is sending up a new spike there. See that? So that's to look forward to. Oh yeah, <laughs> this is funny. So this is also a fowl, like the big white one back there, but this is a kind of, um, uh, what you call it, it's not a species plant, but I think it's a primary cross, if I'm not mistaken, I might be. And it's a fowl that likes warm temperatures and this is one that I got from uh, the other YouTuber, Miss Orchid Girl. She sent it to me many years ago. So anyway, it's going to send out a, a flower spike soon. I repotted it not terribly long ago and that may have triggered it to come and flower again. Okay, but, 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 okay, really exciting news. I have to show you this, bear with me.
Okay, now let me sit back down here again in my comfy spot and show you my Selogeny, which is in blue. And I am holding it up here close so you can see that one of its spikes is quite beautiful with the cascading flowers. That's this one here. But we also have a spike over here and a smaller spike back here. Now, when this plant comes into flower, it kind of drops these sheaths that fall away. See, like a kind of husk around the flowers. And then the flowers come out. And this is a selogeny that can be amazing over time if you've got a big specimen and it's fully in flower and all of the flowers cascade over the edge of the pot it can be an amazing sight to behold it's not one for the cooler greenhouse temperatures now i have a greenhouse with a minimum of five degrees that it's held to in winter so that means the daytime temperatures are going to be, oh, maybe 10 degrees or less. It doesn't tolerate those kind of temperatures as some selogenies do. But this one has been kept here in a cool room in the house. And I suppose the minimum here would be 10 degrees. And then during the day, it would be 15, maybe 16, 18, something like that. And this plant was given to me by a dear friend, Alberto, who had a YouTube orchid channel. And then he moved from Italy to Kew Gardens, where he took up a job as, or an apprenticeship, I suppose, working with the plants in Kew Gardens. Everybody's absolute dream job, so jealous. And actually I went and visited him a couple of years ago, just before the big COVID thing. And saw so behind the scenes at Kew, he brought me in and showed me memorably the uh, cold orchid room and the selogenies there. Oh dear Lord, you would not believe how amazing those specimens were. It was a wonderful, wonderful trip that I, <laughs> I cherish actually. So lucky to have been able to do that. Anyway, when Alberto went to the UK, he couldn't bring his plant collection with him and he gave me this beautiful Selogeny Flacida. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to flower it up until now. So this is actually its first flowering. It was repotted last year. And when I repotted it last year, I noticed it's actually composed of three or four pieces in the pot. So it looks like quite a big specimen, but if you consider that there are three or four plants in there, it's not really. And I repotted it and it's rewarded me with these really quite beautiful flowers. They're very cream in the middle, but the outer petals have a kind of, um, uh, like a kind of butternut shade to the, um, to the color and really very beautiful. But there is a downside and <laughs> let me tell you what the downside is. The downside is that this plant absolutely reeks. It does not smell nice at all. No, not one little bit, not kind of, you know, um, yeah, now that I know what it is, it's okay. This plant really smells bad. And I was sitting in the sitting room one evening watching television and I started, oops, there's one of those sheets. I hope that's not a flower I've knocked off. I think it's just a sheath. I smelt something. I thought, oh my goodness, what's that? Has the cat died in some recess of the room? Okay, the smell wasn't like something dead. It's sharper. It's like, um, maybe it has something of very unpleasant cleaning fluids about it. That kind of sharpness, uh, not something dead. And I do have plenty of plants that smell like something dead. This isn't one of them. But anyway, I was sitting in the, the here watching telly and thought, oh my gosh, what's that? And then I tracked it down. My plant had actually, the flowers had actually opened and I hadn't seen them. So I found out that way. However, 
as with most things, once you actually know what you're seeing or what you're smelling or what you're hearing, it's easier to deal with it. And I have, yeah, I'm reconciled to this one. I think it's just beautiful. It's a glorious specimen and it has such happy memories of Alberto and the time when he was here staying with me and the time when I visited him in Kew. And I will certainly hope that this will go on to be a magnificent specimen in time with cascading blooms coming down over the edge of the pot, looking absolutely amazing, if not smelling absolutely amazing. But you know, you can't have everything, can you? You really can't have everything. So that's the really big orchid news for the moment. And I am so delighted with that. But what I also want to show you is just give you a little update on a couple of plants that I received from another YouTuber from Bumblebee not too long ago. And you will recall that Bumblebee sent me two beautiful Cattleya divisions from her plants a little while ago. And I'm sure you want to know how they're doing. <sighs> okay. <sighs> okay, back again. And I have the two plants here. Right, so uh, Bumblebee sent me this division of a pink Cattleya that she loves. It's absolutely one of her favorites. And I put the name up on the screen. And it's actually done quite well. You can see that it's healthy. It's not dehydrated in any way. Uh, when she sent it to me, it was pushing up a new growth. So I didn't repot because I didn't want to disturb that new growth. We all know that Cattleyas can be very tricky if you repot them at the wrong time, especially the bifoliate ones. Now this is uh, not a bifoliate one, but still, I just didn't want to risk anything dodgy happening with the new growth and with this new plant. And this here is the new pseudobulb that started out when I got it and it has grown up and you can see it's not as big as some of the other leaves or the other pseudobulbs in the plant but it's still a decent size and I'm quite happy with that as a result. There's no sign of flowers or anything like that at the moment. Um, certainly this new growth has no evidence of a sheath in it and it's mature now. It's not going to get one at this stage. So I'm quite happy with that. And whereas I won't get flowers this year, hopefully, hopefully next year. Now there was a second plant that Bumblebee sent me. And I have to tell you that this is a far from happy story, this second one. So this second plant that she sent me, it, um, quite a vigorous plant. But when it came, it just came without any roots and it didn't do anything for very much the longest, the longest time. And yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is the plant. And as you can see, it's really badly dehydrated. So it came without any roots and I could see that it was trying to push up a new growth. So then the race begins. So if you get a Cattleya and it has no roots, but it has new growth, you can expect that after it sends that new growth up to a certain extent, then the roots will start. The roots will come with the new growth. Um, in some Cattleyas, the roots come first and then new growth, but mostly it comes a little bit after. And I think this is one where the roots come only after the new growth is quite well advanced because I watched it like a hawk trying to hydrate it, which is difficult when it doesn't have roots to absorb the water. And then as the new growth developed after a while, I saw that it began to send out roots, three beautiful shiny new roots. And it was like, hooray, the plant can be saved. But unfortunately, it's then, it's a race. So can the plant survive long enough to be able to get moisture from those roots? So it's a big plant, it's dehydrating all the time, it's losing water, and its root system isn't big enough to get it the water it needs to survive and even just to revive those leaves that are dehydrated. And I think really it's safe to say with this plant that it's not going to make it. Now, if we look in here, you can see that we have uh, like 
new roots in here and they are they're down into the medium and they're doing their best to get what they need to help support the plant but we have had also like a couple of pseudobulbs at the back of withered which in itself isn't a terribly bad thing but just generally the plant is so um so depleted in water now at this stage that i think it just can't make it and uh, i mean that's the thing that's in my experience with cattleyas whenever you get a cattleya without roots especially a division it is such a dodgy process because it will depend on the vigor of the particular cultivar you have and the um i guess the environment that you have it in the humidity levels and cattleya is like they're not like oncidiums you can't a rootless oncidium is an easy thing to save because you can just place it with the base of the plant in some sphagnum moss which you keep moist and the plant will grow roots it's really gratifying to see that but with cattleyas they're a plant that really need to dry out between watering so you can't have any roots sitting in moisture the whole time they'll just rot and um, with something like this that needs moisture it really doesn't know what what's good for it it can't deal any new roots that will um, appear in damp sphagnum will just rot off and you know not get going and it just it's very disappointing really so I'm sorry I, I like I'm not going to throw this out just yet I will keep tending it for a bit but it's the saddest looking thing that you've seen this is the new growth here and needless to say it didn't reach anything like the size of the previous pseudobulbs on the plant but um yeah okay so sorry bumblebee did my best with that one but i do look forward to this one um doing well do you see the kind of folding on the leaves here now i have had a couple of cattleyas in the past that tend to do that and i don't think it's anything to worry about i think it's just something in the genetic or um, makeup of certain cattleyas that they have a tendency to do that it might be a deficit in something i don't know but um yeah we can see also that the newest leaf has intended to do it so yeah okay right and i guess i'm just having a look behind me to make sure there's nothing i wanted to show you that i didn't get around to showing you my oncidium shari baby believe it or not is sending out another spike now this one flowered for me just a couple of months ago and now it's sending out another spike so that's another thing to look forward to in my collection i don't have it here to show you but take my word for it and of course the large cattleya purpurata my giant is producing sheaths at the moment and I think I'm going to make a video about that very shortly because there are a couple of things I want to say about Cattleya purpurata in terms of what you read about them and the actual reality of the situation. So I'll just keep that for another day. That brings me to the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and I will see you soon on perhaps goodness you might like other things besides orchids in which case you'll enjoy my houseplant videos my greenhouse videos or my garden videos if not i'll see you on the next orchid video thanks for watching bye